if you still want to make it for, can you know, for a minute? Get started? All right. Welcome, everyone. Um, last mini conf of the day. It's good. I'm glad we actually got some people to turn up and you haven't all gone for beers yet. Uh, today we'll be, uh, be chatting about um, OpenStack operations for the engineers. And um, hopefully you'll get some tips, tricks, and, uh, and learn a few things uh, from the three of us. We're going to try and make it as interactive and fun as possible. So there are three of us. We're going to have to run through it pretty quick because we've only got 50 minutes. Um, so there'll be myself. My name's Anthony. Uh, we've also got Daniel as well. Um, no one can pronounce uh, his surname, so we just call him MasterChef uh, for his surname. Um, actually, I should... <laughs> I shouldn't say that. Um, people can pronounce his surname. I cannot pronounce his surname, so I call him Master Chef. Uh, and we've also got Alex as well, uh, Alex Tesh too. Um, feel free to reach out to us uh, if you have any questions on Twitter or via our email addresses. We're always happy to help out wherever we can. Uh, so today we're going to uh, we're going to take you through uh, the deploying area. So we're going to talk about some of the installation tools for OpenStack. Uh, we'll also be having um, having a chat about the, the orchestration and the backup side as well. So we'll, we'll delve into heat. Uh, we've got a couple of live demonstrations on, on that. And we'll also be talking about workloads back, workload backups as well. Uh, and then from there, we'll move into the final section, which is the consume area. And we'll have a chat about Man Ma Murano, can't speak today, and also Sahara. So we've got a bit of a Hadoop um, demonstration as well too. Um, part of that's live, part of it's uh, pre-canned because of the time that it takes to, uh, to run it. So that's the basic format, uh, 50 minutes to get through, uh, lots of live demonstrations. What could possibly go wrong? Who knows? Uh, by the way, this is, this is our manager driving that car and, um, and it is a hire car, so yeah, just in case you were wondering. So deploy. Um, just before we move into deploy, a uh, quick room survey. Who, who has actually tried to, or who has actually deployed OpenStack? Um, just, just deployed it. Yep, had a, had a go. Yep, cool. Yep, okay, excellent. So we've got lots of people who've had, had a crack at it. The first time that you, you did that, um, did it take you hours? Days, okay, days. We, weeks, okay. I haven't made it yet. Yeah. Okay. But look, this is this is not uncommon. Um, I was recently presenting uh, at Open Source in India, and I asked the same question, and not one person put up their hand saying that they'd successfully deployed it. Um, one of the one of the guys in the front row said, "How come you haven't got years on that slide?" And I was like, <laughs> I'm "Like, come on, okay." Um, the other thing to remember too, if you are presenting like I was in in India, don't use pets versus cattle as the slide. Um, over there, they don't talk about um, pets and cattle uh, in terms of you know the, the virtualization and you know shooting the, the cattle. Um, don't do that. All right. Um, definitely, definitely use um, fine china and paper plates. Okay, that's what they prefer over there. So just a little tidbit. I, I told you you'd learn a lot out of this pr presentation. So hopefully, if you take one thing away, take that one away. Um, I'm going to throw over to Alex now, um, jumping into uh, the installation tools. Hi. Hello, everyone. All right. We are going to do this one a little bit Pulp Fiction style. So let me start with the demo first, because it's going to take about 10 minutes, and we have about four live demos. So we're still trying to work out whether it's going to run within the time or not. OK. Uh, basically, what we're going to show you is Packstack. I don't know if any of you tried Packstack before. No one? Oh, this is kind of cool. Oh, two of you. All right. So basically, Packstack is the one that we use with RDO or uh, Red Hat OpenStack, right? It's a very simple installation tool. And what we need to do is basically make sure that the repositories are in place. In this case, I am using a satellite. A satellite server is running as one of my VMs. I actually have uh, three VMs running at the moment in, in this notebook. Okay. One of them is the all in one VM, which is basically going to run the full. OpenStack in a single machine, a single VM, is going to be a nested KVM, which is not very convenient for production, but still for our purposes we'll do fine. And I'm running satellite just basically to provide the repositories, okay? For you guys, likely you are going to try it with Fedora or something like that. Basically, you have to make sure that the Apple is in place, the Apple repo, and there is an OpenStack repo depending on where you want to use iHouse or Juno or uh, 
whatever installation that uh, whatever uh, OpenStack version that you want to do. Okay, so for the pack stack, it's basically uh, one single command. What we do is just call pack stack all in one, all right? It's going to ask us for the password, and basically it's going to create keys across all the servers that you want to use for the installation. Packstack is kind of cool. It uses Puppet in the background, and basically what it does is it calls the Puppet manifest, and it makes sure that everything is deployed across whatever servers that you define, okay? Let me go back to the, this one is going to take about 10 minutes. Let me go back to the presentation, and basically we can talk about the rest of the tools that we have for today. Uh, the very first one is triple O. Triple O, Anthony is going to delve into details later on, but basically it's the only official OpenStack project that deals with installation today, okay? We call it triple O because it means OpenStack over OpenStack, okay? So basically you have to build an under cloud, which is a short stream OpenStack, and from there it's going to be the final production cloud, okay? Later we're going to the details. Packstack is the one that we run through. Uh, I would say that perhaps this is the easier way to install OpenStack using, uh, using Packstack. Okay, basically a single command, the repos in place, and you can get it running in about 10 minutes. You can start your own testing. Fuel is maybe the most popular one. It's a tool by Marantis. Basically what we do is we just download the ISO. It's free to download if you want to give it a try. We install it in one machine. And from that particular server, actually, we can manage several OpenStack clouds, okay? It can do bare metal provisioning, so we just have to boot the servers, okay, a pixie boot, and then uh, Fuel will detect these machines, and then basically we just tell them how we want to deploy. Okay, some of these tools are uh, enterprise kind of tools that we can use in, in production environments because they build the OpenStack in a Heche kind of way, okay? So we will have fully redundant components. Triple O is one of them, Fuel is one of them, uh, Packstack is not, obviously. Okay, there is a lot of improvements to be done there. Uh, Foreman is one of the improvements that we are making. It's basically UI's base. It's kind of an easier way to for the users to see what's going on with Packstack, and it will let you manage it as well. It's also based on Puppet. And Spinal Stack is quite an interesting one. Uh, it's from a company called Innovance, a French company. It got recently acquired by Red Hat, and uh, Innovance was a very particular company in terms of OpenStack because the professional services is very strong, okay? So they have this tool, it's basically script-based, it makes use of Ansible and, uh, and Puppet to carry on with the installation, and it's quite flexible, but it's not as simple to, to use. And Crowbar is maybe one of the first tools that came about with OpenStack. It's a collaboration between um, Dell and SUSE. Okay, I think you guys are about Juju before in another session, so we are not going to delve into that one. Okay, for the Packstack installation demo, basically we cover this one a bit. Uh, we make sure that the repos are in place. When we do an all-in-one, um, this guy is actually going to make sure that we have the what we call the answer file in place. So let me see if I can show you that file. Okay. Here we have the shell. Okay, so basically it's creating this file. And from this file, we can say all the components that we want to install. So in a typical all-in-one installation, basically almost everything is installed excluding heat. If you want to install heat, you just look for heat into this file, change the equal to yes, and basically we can run Packstack again. It's going to go on to the manifest. Whatever is already in place, then the manifest is not going to bother, right? Puppet style. And then it will go through the heat installation, so we just have to run it twice. Okay? Okay, what I will do now is uh, let's check how many manifests are running. Is it still going through Cinder right now? Perhaps five more minutes. Let me switch back to the actual deck, and let's cover a little bit about Ironic and Triple O. Cool. Thanks, Alex. Um, so... Look, basically most of the, the installation uh, tools that Alex has spoken about, many of them are utilizing Puppet, many of them are util and, and or um, Ansible as the, as the primary drivers in there. The interesting thing to me is that I have a lot of friends who have used Puppet in the past, you know, I'm, I'm one of them as well, but if I can just see a show of hands, like who's used Puppet, you know, in anger, let's say, okay, so it's probably barely 50%. That's, that's pretty common from what I'm seeing out there in the industry. There's a lot of um, operations groups um, and, and even developers who are not familiar with Puppet. So if you do want to, um, 
if you do want to move into and start playing with OpenStack, um, one of the easier ways to possibly give it a try is to, to use um, use one of the uh, OpenStack distros that maybe has triple O. And um, you can you can utilize triple O because um, it's you don't have to go and learn Puppet. All right, it's OpenStack on OpenStack. It makes it a lot easier for you to be able to do the installation. So one of the distributions that I've used, which has um, which leverages triple O, you can have an enterprise grade community edition um, of OpenStack up and running in under 40 minutes. Okay, it basically utilizes about um, six, six or seven commands uh, to get it up and running. So it, it is quite easy. Uh, you can be into the horizon portal and you can be off and running. The, the, the actual project itself, um, it utilizes Ironic and Nova um, to be able to, to do the, uh, the deployment. Um, and then from there, it, it uh, leverages heat, okay? So they're the three main projects that it reuses within OpenStack. So obviously OpenStack's made up of a number of projects. They're the three main ones that it leverages. It pretty much just does an in, a really, really small OpenStack installation to then go off and be able to install itself. Um, quite ingenious, quite tricky, um, but makes it a lot easier for yourself uh, to be able to leverage that. Uh, so just to sort of cover off Ironic, because it is one of the main projects um, which Triple uh, O is leveraging, uh, think of it very similar to, to Nova, um, so in terms of uh, your compute, but in this particular case, it's um, primarily for bare metal, okay? Um, so, which is what you're going to require to be able to do the, the installation um, for trip, using Triple O on OpenStack. Uh, Ironic uh, is, is going to, now my, my understanding is that Ironic is expected to be integrated uh, into the new Kilo um, version of OpenStack, uh, which, is, which is coming soon. Uh, so it will be integrated as part of that. Um, at the moment, um, not currently. Okay. Some of the main use cases, um, some, of the, some of my colleagues out there, um, the two main use cases that I've, that I've been hearing that people are leveraging Ironic for, um, mainly databases. Uh, so I've, I've got some colleagues who are doing a lot of data warehousing. Um, they're leveraging or making use of Ironic in this particular case, um, really because the size of the databases and the, and the power that they're requiring, uh, because they're using a lot of cubes within a data warehousing uh, solution, they're leveraging Ironic in that particular case uh, because it gives them that flexibility and it also gives them the compute power that they need. So a uh, big use case for anyone who's, who's running uh, the larger databases. Also, uh, the guys in the Hadoop world as well are leveraging Ironic quite a lot too. Uh, they obviously need the power, especially if you're, um, if you're using things like MapReduce on it and stuff like that. Uh, Ironic is definitely a good, good use case for that. Um, the third area too, which is, which is being leveraged from a number of customers, um, if you do a bit of a search on, on Google, um, one of the big airline companies in Australia recently leveraged Ironic um, to do some high performance computing. And uh, they, were, they were leveraging that on an OpenStack platform as well. Um, just do a, do a Google and you'll, you'll find that one quite an interesting read um, and, and was, was a good use case. Um, so obviously the deployment steps um, are pretty simple for, uh, for Ironic. Basically the, you have to register it. Um, from there you have to uh, obviously create an, an image um, and then that image you're storing glance not much different to, uh, to a virtualized one, and then it uses um, a Nova boot for the physical server. So the three main steps of Triple O, coming back to Triple O, um, first of all, it creates the seed. Uh, from that seed, it then goes off and deploys the undercloud. The seed is basically the smallest uh, installation of OpenStack that, uh, that can be done. Uh, from then, it goes off, uh, creates the undercloud, and deploys the overcloud. The seed and the undercloud still remain uh, running as well, um, so you will need uh, to keep them up. Uh, and if the undercloud, for example, does go down, the seed can bring it back up again too. So there's a little bit of HA there, but it's not. But it currently doesn't reverse. Okay, how are we going with our? All good. Uh, with 
With Triple O, uh, like I was saying before, it literally is six command lines. Takes less than 40 minutes to be able to um, to execute it uh, and get the Horizon portal up and running. Uh, there's a number of YouTube videos out there that you can you can go and have a look at to get some tips and tricks on where to download a distribution which is capable of doing that, um, and also. Um, the uh, installation steps to be able to run and the commands that you need to know um, to be able to do that. Uh, the one that I've done up here, which is running on the demo video, is just running on um, an Ubuntu 14.04 uh, um, server. Um, so you can just Google, um, just Google Triple uh, O and my name on it, and you'll find a video that can show you all the links that you need to do and all the information that you need to be able to run that as well. All right, how are we going with Packstack? Almost done? Not quite. So we, oh, we right? Let's check. So before we jump ahead. into, before we jump into orchestration, or you want me to cover orchestration? Back to the demo? Okay, let's see how the pack stack is going now. Yeah. We need oh. a hotter oven. It's not look pretty good, does it? We're not up yet. Do you want me to cover orchestration? Yeah, let's go with the orchestration side. Let me just get this screen back. All right. Cool. Oh, are we up with Packstack? Go ahead. Okay. Before we go back to um, to see the Packstack um, finalization of the of the working software, so the next section we're going to go into is really around orchestration. Orchestration, um, to me, is really about automation. Um, many, of the, many of the groups and the technology leads that I talk to um, are sometimes hesitant to get into and, and start working with, with automation. Um, maybe because they see videos like this, I, I don't know. <laughs> you know. I mean, what could possibly go wrong, hey? Um, but the fact is that human error is literally the main cause of deplo deployment failure out there, okay? So the more that you can automate, the better reliability and repeatability that you're going to have um, within your applications, within what you're deploying, and with the environments that you're setting up. They're repeatable. Uh, it makes it very, very easy for us to be able to push I mean, the environments in a continuous delivery way. And I think this video really resonates with everyone because we, we've all been there at some particular stage. We've all been there when you know everything's fallen to pieces, and you thought to yourself, "Well, why didn't I write a script to do that?" Because you know, I, I've, it was two o'clock in the morning, and I and I typed in the wrong command. Um, so we'll move into orchestration. Are we right to go, jump back now? Yep. Yep. All good. All right. So here's the rest of the pack stack demo. All right, just in time. So basically here the pack stack just finished, right? Uh, so there are a few things that hopefully we should be able to see. Um, let me go back to my shell. Go back to the shell. Basically from the nova.com file, uh, we should be able to see that this one is actually a KMOON virtualization. And uh, it's not quite convenient to use it in, uh, in production, right? Uh, Packstack will configure for you what, what we call the, the bridge interface. So this BREX that we have here is basically the one that is going to connect to our external network. So there are a few more steps that you need to do in order to have a working configuration for OpenStack. Basically, using OBS, the open virtual switch, we need to attach whatever interface that is going to our external network into our our bridge all right and after that basically we're going to get um, a working open stack configuration uh, let me check the virtual machines that we have at the moment because for the next demo which is the orchestration one we're going to go into heat and um, for heat actually i will need a little bit more of memory in this machine so what we will do is um, let me check back Okay, let's destroy one of these guys. We don't need it anymore. I think one is gone. All right. Okay. 
All right, what we will do now is I'm going to use another VM, which is only the controller, the OpenStack controller, and uh, my compute node is going to run in uh, the actual notebook, okay? So let's log in into this one. I'm going to use a hit admin account. And what I want to show you from here is basically how to run a CFN template. Uh, let's go to a network topology. Let's get, the, let's get this one running. Right. Basically, we are kicking one of our templates that we have. And uh, let's try to run some checks just to make sure that this guy is actually running from the background. You can see actually how the networks are being deployed. Initially, we only have the external network, which is the one that we get out of the box after the pack stack configuration. So now our script created a database network. We are creating a DMC uh, as well. And basically, what we are doing is we're going to create three instances, okay? Two of the instances are going to be attached to the DMC. Uh, they are going to be load balanced, ideally. And then our database is running, is running um, Oracle Express Edition is going to be attached to the, to the DB segment, okay? So we're going to assign a floating IPs to these two guys. And uh, basically the, the database is going to be isolated from external, so it can only be reached through the DB tier, right? So we should be able to see the instances provisioning here. Okay, and this demo again is going to run for around 10 minutes. So what we can do is, let me put this one back so at least I can see when this one is finished. And let's run back to the presentation. Okay, this is basically what we call a CFN template. Okay, it's AWS compatible for, you. So for those of you guys who are familiar with Amazon Web Services. Basically, this one is uh, what they call the cloud formation and automation scripts, right? It's based on JSON. Uh, this is usable in OpenStack, okay, with some minor modifications. We can actually get this kind of JSON script running and orchestrate a full cloud solution. Okay, so a bit more information on HIT. Uh, by the way, do you know why we call it HIT? No, no idea. Okay, because we need HIT to build the cloud, actually, so that, that was the whole idea behind it. All right, so the project actually got started in Havana, okay? In Havana, basically, we were using the CFN templates, uh, pure JSON. It got interested in Icehouse. In Icehouse, basically, they created the whole templates, what we call heat orchestration templates. And the whole idea was to basically make it more legible for the developers and easier to, to program, right? So in this case, we're using YAML. We have something called autoscaling that works pretty well in heat. And there is quite a lot of collaboration going between the Silometer developers and the heat developers in these two different projects. Because Silometers basically will keep track of the utilization that you have in your instances, right? So whatever CPU and memory utilization that you are running, we can take advantage of this information in heat. And basically, we create autoscaling groups. And we define thresholds there. Okay, so based on these thresholds, once you hit certain utilization from the CPU, then HIT will trigger the autoscaling, and then basically we can provision additional instances for the web tier or whatever tier that we have inside, okay? It works also the other way around. Once the utilization hits the threshold for the bottom side, the utilization goes down, basically the instance will be terminated, okay? So it's quite cool in that sense. Uh, interesting point to note, after Nova and Neutron, HIT is the hot project at the moment. So there is a lot of commits going in for heat. All right. Let's talk a little bit about workload backups. OK, and, and when I cover this portion, I, I basically come from the perspective that we are using pure OpenStack. OK, we are not using additional tools. So there are quite a few ways in which we can do this. Uh, perhaps the first case is when the users want to backup the actual instances. OK, they say, OK, yes, I know that this is supposed to be a cattle kind of workload. But what happens if I really, for any reason, I want to make sure that I back up this particular instance? I don't want to lose the configuration that we have inside. So this first case, we can run through these steps. And basically, what we are doing is uh, cloning the image in a way that we can get it into, into Glance. And we can download it into any machine and basically just move it around, copy it to another OpenStack Cloud, and get it running again. Okay. 
uh, interesting fact is once we do this, it's going to be a raw image. So if the original one was a QCAL, then basically you are going to get the, the full size image and you will need to use Chemium IMG to basically reduce it again to QCAL. Not a big deal. Okay, so this one is perhaps the, the first case. For the second one, since they're related, we are going to do what we call the volume-based approach. Uh, most of the installations today uh, still use LVM as a backend for Cinder. Okay, so basically we configure what we call the Cinder Volumes BG, and we just attach the loans to this particular volume group, and uh, whatever instances, that, uh, whatever volumes that we want to create on Cinder are going to run inside this BG. So what we do is we connect to the Cinder host, and basically we just take a snapshot of, the, of that particular volume. Okay, we can actually do a K part to recognize the partition of the snapshot, we just mount it and we can back up a specific data that is running inside. Uh, interesting facts, the volume can be associated to the instance at the time. Of course, if the word block is dynamic, you may want to quiet whatever information that you have inside just to make sure that it's consistent. Okay, this one is widely used at the moment. Case number three. We're going to use Swift. This one is pretty useful because, as you can see in the blue square, so basically this will back up only the actual data. Okay, it's not the whole row volume that is being backed up. Okay, we follow these steps. We have to create a container, and inside the container, basically, we define the backup coming from the Cinder volume that we have. Okay. Cinder snapshot is the next one. This one is quite a simple one, but the drawback. Is, is the full grow backup. So whatever size that you have in the volume, even if you're only using 10% of the capacity, then you are going to take the full size for the, for the actual backup. Uh, all of these cases, of course, uh, can get a lot more interesting if you're using Ceph. Okay, Ceph, they have their own way to doing backups. And uh, things can get pretty interesting and complicated as well. So we're not going to cover that portion as of now. And a lot of customers, they also come to us and ask us, hey, how about enterprise backups? Whatever backups that we have been running in the past, is it possible to get this integrated with the instance? There is no reason why you shouldn't, right? It's, it's only that they have to spend a little bit more of money to get net backup or networker running with, with the workloads. But it's workable as well. All right, let's see how the CFN demo is going. All right, so it seems that <laughs> seems that all the instances are running at the moment. Okay, so we got a floating IP for the web server one. I'm pretty sure that the second one should get it as well. Let's do a refresh. Yeah, is there as well? And let's see what's going on with the actual database server because that one is the one that usually takes takes longer. Let's try to open a console. All right, it seems to be running. Huh. Oracle is running. Uh, let's do a quick check. So in this case, what we want to do is I create a particular schema, and this is supposed to be kind of a real estate database. Uh, so let me try to remember which tables we configure in this thing. There is one particular table called Sun. I don't know if some of you are familiar with uh, Singapore districts, because this is a place where we configure this stuff. Uh, so let's run a quick query here for the Sun table. And basically, it will give you all the districts that you have in Singapore. So hopefully, we should be able to draw this information from the Tomcat servers, which are the web instances that we have running here. Let's take one of the floating IPs as an example. Um, and let's try to access it from here. Let's import 8080. All right. Seems to be there. 
So the zones basically is loading the information from the database. Okay, this is a typical use case. Some customers ask us today, okay, we have this particular world running. Uh, it's not really meant for cloud, but how about if we wanted to port it to OpenStack? Is it possible? Yes, it's possible. Would it be an ideal world for OpenStack? Maybe not. Okay, then they come with a question. How do I back up this kind of stuff? So that's how the particular use cases that we saw before come come out very useful, right? So basically what we do in this case is we have an actual cinder volume and our database is sitting here. Okay, so whatever issue that we have with the database server, basically we just terminate the instance, spawn a new one, and then we can basically attach our data, the archive logs, and just roll forward the database to a consistent state. This is quite a cool case. All right, let's delve now into the consume portion, and uh, we're going to see two more use cases. One of them is Murano, which Daniel is going to cover. And finally, we're going to delve into Sahara, which is Hadoop as a service. Yep, thanks, thanks for that, Alex. Um, so you can switch over to the Sahara demo yep. while we're talking about consume. So, you know, as, as Anthony has introduced, we've covered off deploy, orchestrate, and backup, and now we're on to consume. Um, I always like to think that I'm the pretty one of the group, so I get the pretty section for now. Um, so we'll look at more of the kind of the eye candy interfaces that, um, that are available out there uh, project-wise. Um, so with Murano, um, this is a, a project started by Marantis um, that provides a, a marketplace, uh, an application catalog for OpenStack, um, uh, Cloud Foundry, uh, PaaS-based offerings, uh, etc. cetera. Um, so the, the idea here is to allow app developers, admins to, to uh, publish various cloud-ready cloud, cloud -ready apps. Uh, and, and then effectively allow users to deploy those apps using that push button approach um, and, and, and utilize some of the underlying orchestration mechanisms such as um, the heat that, that Alex has, has demonstrated um, some of that other OpenStack goodness. Now the Murano also has that, that, that tie to metering and billing around a solometer so if you're here for that talk earlier um, covering off solometer to, um, to look at uh, and trigger against certain types of events. Now um, it's an it's early stage project as well so uh, it might be something that we'll go through a bit of a demo here you might want uh, something you might be interested in looking into and getting involved in. Um, so this is just a quick screenshot of, of Murano in action, let's say, within um, uh, the Horizon portal, the Horizon portal for, for OpenStack, and some of the apps, some of the sample apps that have been, have been stocked in here. Um, the other screenshot we have here, of course, is um, a, an example, let's say, HP Vertica um, analytics platform, one of the apps that, um, uh, that we have out there as a community edition that's available for people to download and kick the tires on, publish through uh, Murano. Now, swapping over to what we have here, um, the, the interface that you're seeing here is the, um, the HP development platform. Um, HDP is a, a PaaS offering based off of Cloud Foundry, and with, within, um, within this PaaS offering, what we have is the Murano marketplace uh, driving the ability for users to, um, to deploy from sample applications that, um, that are stocked by your, again, your developers, your cloud admins, et cetera, for users to consume. Now, as a, as a PaaS offering, this is catering for the development, uh, the development um, demographic, if you want to say that, um, around um, taking applications, defining them via YAML file, and having them sourced um, via internal or external repositories, published through, and then allow this sort of self-service consumption um, approach. So Murano driving along the marketplace so that, um, so again, you get that, that, that uh, push, push and go um, user interface um, to get on with work. Um, now, another um, element of, of Murano in action here is looking at an existing app that's been deployed and drilling into uh, the WordPress app that's available in this case. Um, what we have here is, is just an idea of a simple auto-scaling um, uh, simple auto-scaling GUI entry here to allow users to drop in, define a CPU threshold to, to trigger an instance growth. So in this case, we're starting at a you know, singular instance with the one instance minimum. Um, once, we, once we just drag and drop the sliders to a one, two, or four instance minimum, then the, uh, the PaaS platform starts to spin up additional instances. So, um, so again, and that users can get on with the work. Um, in this case, scaling out and an application that can, um, that can cope with um, additional instances being spun up and, and, and serve back uh, the services that it's responsible for. So again, Murano driven so that it's a um, nice, nice GUI marketplace driven experience and give users an idea of uh, just that push button consumption experience or give everyone here an idea of that. Um, so that was, was there anything else we wanted to add to that, Anthony? I think that, um, 
Yeah, I think we're going to be ready for time. So um, are we ready with that Sahara demo and all that goodness yep. as well, Alex? So we'll flick back to Alex. He's been doing a great job on, on our demos here, our demo death march. Um, so we've got, uh, we'll be talking to the, uh, the Sahara project. Let me just flick back. All right, for Sahara, I'm going to use Ice House in this case, okay? Sahara is not really officially incubated yet. Uh, how do I get into this screen? Okay. All right. It's not officially incubated. If you want to give it a try, there are not so many distros that you can install it out of the box. Uh, basically, you can try Helium OpenStack if you want to get a kick of Sahara, or if not, my rant is will be perhaps the easier one to get started. Okay, so there are quite a few things that we need to do here. This demo, by the way, runs in about 10 minutes as well. I think we are doing pretty good in time. Uh, the first thing is basically we need to take note of the plugins that you have. Okay, so for this demo, I'm going to use the vanilla Apache Hadoop. Okay, for those of you who are uh, Hortonworks fans, the plugin is there as well, so you can give it a try. Or this one is perhaps the less popular one. All right, we will need to get a an actual glance image, we will need to load it and uh, configure what we call an image registry. In this case, I'm using Fedora, okay? And basically what we do is we associate tags to it. So I'm going to use the vanilla Hadoop and I'm going to use the 2.3 version, which is at this moment the latest one. All right, after we have the register configured, what we do is we go to the group templates, okay? And basically here we have a uh, we have to configure the master and the, the workers for those of you familiar with, with Hadoop, all right? We are using vanilla as well. We have to associate the process that each of the nodes is going to run. For the master, we have the name node, the OC, resource manager, history server. Workers is only data node and the node manager, all right? Once we have this one going, we have to define the actual state of the cluster, how many nodes are going to be inside the actual cluster. So in this case, I'm going to configure two nodes. Uh, for time reasons, okay? Let's hope to get it going fast. Uh, once we have this, we are ready to basically configure the cluster. Configuring the cluster is as easy as basically just saying the version that we want to use. Okay, Vanilla Apache Hadoop. Let's give it a name. Uh, Hadoop test one, sounds good. If you want to assign a keeper, I already have one pre-created, and all the Hadoop nodes are going to be attached to our private network, okay? Floating IPs will be associated later on if you want to try the map and reduce or any other analytics feature. And basically what we do is we kick it in, all right? So this one will take about five minutes to eight minutes, maybe. Let me go back to the deck. Okay, Sahara was previously called Savannah, for those of you who are familiar, uh, quite similar to Neutron, used to be called Quantum in uh, Grizzly. We have to change the name for trademark reasons. We don't want to get sued. Um, okay, it's an open source, native on OpenStack, right? And it's a very useful use case for those people doing that analytics today. Let me, let me do something now. Actually, we have some videos running here with the actual demo, okay? Just in case that the other one doesn't work for a reason. So basically what we're going to do here is go through, through all the steps that I showed you just now. Okay, we have the different flavors. We're going to choose the vanilla flavor in this particular case. Uh, we got the registry loaded, okay? We could as well have been using Ubuntu or RHEL. It's also supported, okay? It's, it's not really a concern. Configuring the workers and, um, and the master, okay? We went through this one. For the cluster templates, basically I am using exactly the same ice house that I loaded just now, okay? So what I am doing here in this demo, I am basically cutting the provision in time, okay? Which takes about 10 minutes, so we can see actually what's going to happen, the end result. All right, so once we get it running, actually we can check the actual configuration from the network topology. We should be able to see the two inst instances kicking in. and. Um, and from Nova as well, if we go back from Horizon, we should be able to see the, the compute nodes provisioning. All right. Okay. All right, our topology shows that the two instances are already attached to the private segment. Okay. 
And basically from the project side, if we check the instances, it should be provisioning at the moment, or oh, it's actually active. All right. Okay, let me go to the next one. Okay, in the next one, basically you will see that this one is already running. We can go to the cluster details, and from here we can see the actual capacity that we have inside the Hadoop file system, right? So at this moment, I only have one worker, and the capacity is about 18 gigs, okay? And from here, we can see that we only have one instance for the workers. It's possible to scale it. It's not uh, an auto-scaling feature yet. Basically, we have to do manual scaling. From here, you can see the jobs. If you want to do map and reduce from, from that particular screen, you should be able to see what's going on. So let's try to give a try to the auto-scaling. Basically, the demo, from here, we just select that we want to add one additional node to the workers, okay? And it's going to add the additional instances into it. We should be able to see it from the network topology. There it is. We have two workers. And if we go to the next portion, assuming that everything is complete, once more we can check the cluster details. The capacity should have been increased by twice the amount. So now we have 37 gigs. And we can see that we have two nodes running as worker, okay? So the scaling part is, is working just fine. We can scale down as well. Basically, we just go back to the cluster, reduce one of the workers, and just kick it in. All right. So what I will do just now is uh, let's get into the wrap-up. We have some links that could be of, of interest to you guys. All right, well, um, you just want to do the, the last part of the demo in a moment? Yeah, I'll all right. With the links. So we're, we're basically finished. Um, I hope you got, I hope what you got out of today was just a few tips and tricks on, you know, some of the more interesting okay. projects that are out there in and around OpenStack. Um, some of the more interesting uh, pieces that you could leverage to be able to help you to be able to deploy faster, to be able to orchestrate quicker. Um, and to be able to leverage some of the larger Hadoop type solutions um, or at least be able to have a play with it. Um, you, can, you can also like, reach out to us. Um, we, can, we can hook you up with uh, and, and show you how to get uh, free cloud accounts to be able to, uh, to stand up any of the, uh, the development platforms or even to be able to test um, some of the, uh, the Hadoop clustering and things like that too. Um, or we, can, or we can also give you the link so you can go off and do some reading um, and then be able to, to install it and play with it as well. Um, so I hope you found it interesting. Um, we tried to make it as fun as possible. If, if that is possible, I'm not sure. But anyway, yeah, at 5.30 on, on day two. Um, so thank you all for your time uh, and enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you. Is there a reason you didn't use Cinder backup create in any of the backup methods for volume backup? Is there a reason you didn't use Cinder backup create to do backups? Uh, no, actually, that use case is, is fine as well. I mean, uh, guys, what I was trying to do is basically run through a few use cases that are possible to use. That doesn't mean that it's on the only way. Actually, there are more ways to use OpenStack to, to do your backups. If you want to use that particular case, it's fine as well. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Sure.